Hello everyone, so welcome back to Basil's Physics Classroom. So in the last class, we were learning about reflection, refraction, and inside refraction, we learned about the real depth and apparent depth concepts and also about the glass slab concept, right? In today's class, we are going to learn about prism. We are going to learn about prism. Okay, so let me draw a small prism here. I hope this is clear for you. A small prism I am drawing here. Right now, this A I have marked here, and that A is known as the angle of the prism. A is known as the angle of the prism. A light is incident at a certain angle, and I'm drawing the normal here. This I call the angle of incidence. It gets refracted, and this is the second interface here. Again, I'm drawing the normal here. Again, undergoes refraction. So as you can see here, here when it is going from the rarer to denser medium, it is actually bending towards the normal. To make it clear, more clear, bending towards the normal. And when it is moving from denser to rarer medium, it is actually bending away from the normal. Okay. Now this angle I call it is R1, and this is R2. I'm also extending this. Okay. This point I will call it as C. And this is point B and this is point D. Fine. Now, this angle I call it as the angle of emergence, that is the angle of incidence. Let me extend this angle of incidence a bit and uh, extending this emergent back. So, this angle we can call it as angle of deviation. Deviation. Okay. So, here angle of incidence is defined. The first surf interface R1 is a refraction. Second interface, we have defined R2 and we have also defined delta over there. Okay. Now, let us go a bit more deeper and learn what is happening there inside a prism. Okay. Now, consider the A, B, C, D portion there. What is that? That's a cyclic quadrilateral, right? So, considering A, B, C, D, one thing is very clear. Based on the concepts of cyclic quadrilateral, we can write. A, that is the angle A, plus the angle C should be equal to what? 180 degree. Angle A plus angle C should be 180 degree. Fine. Now, from here, as you can see, R1, R2, and C. B, D, C actually is a triangle, right? And we know that the total sum of the angles of a triangle is what? 180 degree. So, we can write R1 plus R2 plus C is equal to 180. Fine. Let me substitute this condition over here. So you'll be getting R1 plus R2 plus C is equal to A plus C. Substituting this in here. Right. So you get C and C goes. First condition you have to remember here in case of a prism R1 plus R2 equal to A, which is the anchor of the prism. Please remember this. I'm writing it here. R1 plus R2 is equal to A. The first very important condition you have to remember. Okay. Now, let's go and find out what is our delta, the angle of deviation. So, from the here, this is actually angle I, right? So, this total should be what? The total should be again I. If the total angle is I and this is R1, that implies this angle should be I minus R1. Okay? That should be I minus R1. Now, similarly, here you can write this is this angle of emergence, right? So the total should be what? The total should be E itself, vertically opposite angles. So what should be this angle? This angle should be E minus R2. Now look at this triangle. I'll call this point as E. Triangle B C B D E. Triangle B D E. When I look at triangle B D E, delta which is the external angle there. And now we know that external angle is actually equal to sum of the interior opposite angles, right? So we can say this delta is actually equal to I minus R1 plus this one. What is that? E minus R2. So we can write delta is equal to I minus R1 plus E minus R2. Or this is I plus E minus of 
R1 plus R2. And what is R1 plus R2? It is A, right? So delta is equal to I plus E minus A. The second very important condition you have to remember. Delta is equal to I plus E minus A. Let me write, also write that here. Delta is equal to I plus E minus A. Alright. So we have wrote two conditions. One for delta and the other for combined, uh, for the for the angle of refraction say. Right. So now using these two conditions and based on Snell's law, I'm going to find out what is the refractive index of this person. Well, we call the refractive index of this person as n. Right. So from Snell's law of refraction, we can write n is equal to sin i by sin r. N is equal to sin i by sin r. Okay. At minimum deviation, at angle of minimum deviation, on the screen you can see a curve related with minimum deviation. At minimum deviation, we can say that the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence will be equal. So minimum deviation is obtained when? When the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence is equal. At minimum deviation, we can write, the second equation can be written like this, delta is equal to 2i minus a. Or what do you get? i is equal to delta, minimum deviation, right? Delta minimum, m plus a by 2. So you got what is i for this, right? And one more thing, if i is equal to e, we can say that r1 should be equal to r2. Therefore, at minimum deviation, R1 will be equal to R2. Therefore, first, this equation we can write 2R is equal to, this is equal to R, general, okay? Is equal to A or R is equal to A by 2. So, we're getting what is R and we're getting what is I. Substitute both those conditions here. So, you get N is equal to sine of delta M. What is delta M? Minimum deviation, right? Plus a by 2 divided by sine a by 2. So sine of delta m plus a. Delta m is the minimum deviation. Sometimes in your book you will also see it as capital D. Okay. So delta m plus a by 2 divided by sine a by 2. Now suppose we are uh, dealing with a very thin prism. If you are dealing with a thin prism means we know that Thin prism means the angle A will be small. If theta is very small, sin theta is approximately theta, right? So this equation can be written like this, n is equal to, or if you want to use mu, you can use that, okay? No problem. Okay, so n is equal to delta m plus a by 2 by a by 2. Why? Because when, when theta is very small, sin theta is approximately theta, okay? Now, 2 and 2 cancels. So, what do you get from here? A n is equal to delta m plus a or delta m is equal to, take this over here, you get, what do you get? n minus 1 into a. So, when the angle, it is a thin prism we are considering, we can write the angle of minimum deviation delta m, the angle of deviation is equal to n minus 1 into a. Angle of minimum deviation is n minus 1. 1 into a. Okay. So, in case of a thin prism, this is a condition. Okay. Now, one more condition you have to learn here is about the case of no emergence. So, no emergence means, no emergence means, once a ray is incident at the second interface of the refracting surface, it gets reflected back into the same medium. What happens? It is getting reflected back into the same medium. If it is getting reflected back into the same medium, that means a total internal reflection has taken place there. What has taken place? A total internal reflection. Okay. So if you don't know what is total internal reflection, I have provided the link in the description. Please do and watch it. Okay. So total internal reflection has taken place here. And the condition for this to happen is the refractive index mu or n because we are using n here should be greater than 1 by sine a. So no emergence condition occurs when the refractive index is greater than 1 by sine a. Okay, so please do remember this condition of no emergence also. Right, clear? Okay, 
Now let's move on to the condition for dispersion from a prism. Dispersion. Now I'm very sure that you have heard the term dispersion, right? What do you mean by dispersion? Dispersion is actually the splitting of light into its component colors. It is a splitting of light into its component colors. Okay. So when a light is white light is passing moving through a prism or passing through a prism, it actually gets separated into its component colors. So here we define a term known as angular dispersion. What is it called? Angular dispersion. Now angular dispersion means it is actually the angular separation between the extreme colors. So you do remember about Vigio, I hope, right? So it is the angular separation between the extreme colors, right? So it can be written, denoted by theta, angular dispersion, and it is given by, it is given by delta V minus delta R. It is given by delta V minus delta R. What is delta V? Deviation for the violet color. Delta V, deviation for the red color. Also, we already know that what is delta for thin angular prism delta is? n minus 1 into a, right? We can substitute it over here. Okay, instead of n, I'm going to use the letter mu. It's okay, right? So, anything you can use, even if you use n, there is no issues there. So, theta is equal to, theta is equal to mu v minus 1 into a minus mu v r minus 1 into a. Combining them together, we can write like this, mu v minus mu r into a. Angular dispersion. So that's the first term you have to remember here, angular dispersion. Okay. The next term that you have to learn about is dispersive power. What is known as dispersive power. Represented by omega and that is equal to theta by delta y. Where delta y is known as the mean deviation. Delta y is known as the mean deviation. Alright. So this can be written like this. This can be written like this, theta, you can substitute over here, mu v minus mu r into a divided by delta y, mu y minus 1 into a, or omega is equal to mu v minus mu r divided by mu y minus 1. So the dispersive power also we have defined. So define dispersion, which is the splitting of light into its component colors. And we have learned about angular dispersion and about the dispersive power. All right. Now, in addition to these, we have to learn about two different conditions. The first condition we call it, the first condition we call it, dispersion without deviation. What is it? Dispersion without deviation. Dispersion without deviation. Now, dispersion without deviation. To obtain this condition, what we are doing is, we will be using two prisms, which are kept inverted like this. So, without deviation means there is no deviation taking place there. Meaning, when we are using, uh, say, the mean deviation of uh, delta y, when we are considering the mean deviation y, the deviation from this will be annulled by the deviation due to this. Which means the total deviation will correspond to what? Zero. Total deviation will correspond to zero. Therefore, we can write like this. From the first prism, from the first prism when the light is uh, coming in, delta y. That will correspond to, what is delta y correspond to? Mu y minus 1 into a. Fine. From the second prism, delta y dash is equal to mu y dash minus 1 into a. Okay. We know the total deviation is what? Zero. So this plus this should be equal to zero. This plus this should be equal to zero. So first prism angle is a, the other one is a dash. Right? So we can write that as this mu y minus one into a is equal to mu y dash minus one into a dash. Is it clear? This plus this is equal to zero and taking one term to the other side, there will also be a minus sign here. Okay? So here we can write like this a dash by a will be equal to minus a I'm taking here, so minus of mu y minus 1 by mu y dash minus 1. Okay, so this is the condition for dispersion without deviation. Now we move on to the next condition and that is 
deviation without dispersion deviation without dispersion so in this condition there is no dispersion there there can be deviation but there is no dispersion so here we can say that the total dispersion theta will be or theta double dash is equal to zero dispersion is what zero so we can write in the first case when in passing the first prism we can write theta dash is equal to we know that delta v minus delta r right or you can write like this mu v minus mu r into a mu is a refractive index or theta this is theta theta dash is equal to delta v minus delta dash r that's equal to mu dash v minus mu dash r into a all right now we know that the total deviation that is theta plus theta dash is what zero right so when theta plus theta dash is zero means when we add this and this we get something like this mu v minus mu r into a this is actually a dash second is this is equal to mu dash v minus mu dash r into a don't forget a negative sign here because theta plus theta dash is zero so theta equal to minus theta dash right you're getting this from here we can write a dash by a is actually equal to a dash by a is actually equal to what so this here take it over here so mu v minus mu r the minus sign is there outside divided by mu dash v minus mu dash r so you're getting the condition for deviation without dispersion also so the first condition was dispersion without any deviation and the next condition is deviation without any dispersion so i hope these two conditions are clear for you this at least remember the final formula in both the cases okay a proper figure i have also shown on the screen a proper figure in case of uh, deviation without dispersion and dispersion without deviation there all right so we have learned about a prism we have learned about how to find the uh, relationship uh, among the refractive index and the minimum deviation and everything and we have learned about dispersion phenomenon also okay so i hope you have understood the class so in case you have any doubts regarding uh, to prism please feel free to comment below and uh, do subscribe to the channel if you like the video so uh, till we meet next time the next topic and that will be um, total internal reflection thank you